Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And while that other video was loading, I thought, let's add a little flair to this. Let's just don't have it blank like that or straight across. So let's draw a circle, change it to four inches. Tell you what, there's what I'm going to work with. I'm going to move this out of the way. Don't need any more. Take a two-point line and with your control key, it'll be perpendicular and then hit P. Put it in the center of the page. Hit your circle. Hit P or your ellipse. Now, let's move this ellipse up a half of an inch. Doesn't really matter. And we're going to take the shape tool and we're going to select both these. And I'm going to right click my mouse and turn it into a curve. Then I can grab it anywhere on this bar and just kind of slope it up or slope it down. Now let's change our nudge distance to one inch. That way they'll be one inch apart. Control D and make a duplicate. Now shift select both of them and go control G to group them together and then hit P. And now our circle's kind of in the middle. So take your smart fill tool. First of all, let's change our nudge factor to like two inches. Take your smart fill tool to fill in this vessel. Then left click, right click, and then take your name, P-A-P-E-Y-T-O-N, and I'm just using that because that was what was on the original. We're going to go back to impact, and like I said, if you haven't watched the first two videos, you might want to watch those. We're going to bring this in pretty close to what we need and see if it's about right size, and then I'm going to cursor it down. Then I'm going to open the effects window and go to envelope. And with the text selected, we're going to hit create from create an envelope. Click inside our new well and then we've got that. Now what's cool about this, I can just nudge up and we're, we're good to go. So now let's take this, nudge it down and get rid of our, I call it a well. And then we can nudge this up. And we're good. Now, the letters are a little bit smaller than the actual deal, and it's not perfect. Um, let's change our nudge distance to 0 0.001. And let's nudge this text over a little bit. I didn't do a very good job. I must have hit something and actually nudge it down. Then let's take our text and convert it to a curve. You've got to do that to make it cut. Then let's left click, right click it on the mouth. Now let's ungroup this, which would be control U. And let's bring this line down just a little bit where it hits all the letters. Bring this line up till it hits inside all the letters. Now there's probably a way to weld this by the time, like I said before, by the time you figure it out, you've already done this. And if you notice our letter is too close to the side, we want to keep that cut line, so we can just delete that line. I'm going to have to zoom in here. And actually, it's on the outside on this case, so we're just going to delete it. We don't need it. Then I'm going to go through each letter and, and do like I did before. I'm just making it where the, uh, the wood will stay together. Take the virtual segment delete key and just delete these lines. Whoop, went too, went too close. And then you can take these lines and just delete them. You got a little bit of a fragment of a line there and delete these two lines. Now what's cool about the, shape, uh, the smart field, there still might be some rev, uh, little bitty pieces left in there like that. So to make sure they're gone, you don't have to do that. Just use the Smart Fill tool to fill that in. And now everything's gone, and we can cursor that out of the way. Whoop. I still had the Smart Fill tool selected. And then just left-click, right-click in red so you know it's a hairline. And if you haven't watched parts one and two, you might want to back up and watch them under the same name. And because you can figure out how to how to get the snowflakes and bring them in here. 
Now, if you ever have a problem, I'm just going to add this. If you have Snap to Object on, which I normally do, you're going to have trouble lining this thing up because it's going to try to snap to things. As you can see, it's trying to snap to the line. So you just need to go to View, Snap to, and take off, take off uh, Snap to Object. And then that way you won't have that problem. You can move it freely. And it's the same thing in the other video that I really think would be pretty cool, but I'm going to go over it again, is to take this, make a snowflake come off the surface. Let's left click, right click. Let's zoom in here and then just, that's a little bit tricky. Well, remember, if you remember from the second video, that is a text. So we need to go and convert it to a curve. So our virtual segment delete key will cut it. And just kind of cut all these lines. Now, always remember that this is a hairline. So we'll smart fill it. Well, let's get our nudge factor a little higher. Let's make it two inches again. Take our smart fill. Fill that in. Nudge it down. Take the original snowflake because it is a hairline and you wouldn't want it to cut. And then this way, and I'm using brown because I was trying to match the wood a while ago. So we'll make it black. That's a pretty cool effect if you had, you know, a couple more snowflakes on it. And it also saves you time for having you to print to engrave that part that's on a scrap piece of wood. Tell you what, let's do, let's left click this, no fill. Right click, now it is a hairline, so you wouldn't want to do this. But you'll kind of get an idea what it would look like filled in and we're going to fill it in let's uh, try to pick a lighter brown and that's what your ornament's going to look like of the wood because this will actually be engraved and there's another part you don't have to engrave that you could you could engrave the whole thing but it would take a lot of time, and then these would be inverse, reversed engraved. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit, and thank you for watching.